Hey there and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 4 review and today we'll be talking about the latest episode to drop, Rocketeer. We start off the episode straight into the action with Carapace and Cat Noir facing off against a bunch of dinosaurs. With Carapace having sealed them inside his shell and the two heroes beginning to panic because their dino friends are moments away from breaking out. With Cat Noir stating that now would be a good time for Ladybug to turn up. And then she appears holding what appears to be a scientist in her arms having found a dino whistle because for some reason... That's a thing. And this mythical dino whistle somehow reduces these enormous hulking T-Rexes to little puppy dogs that need belly rubs. We then see Nino looking sad for some reason, but when Ladybug asks him about it, he brushes it off. Before the heroes just rush off, leaving this woman with the dinosaurs and what? I thought these were Shadow Moth shenanigans. Are you telling me there are legit dinosaurs running around Paris? And then the scientist says that maybe bringing dinosaurs back to life wasn't the best idea. Once again, what? You're telling me that she managed to restore a species that's been extinct for millions of years. And did they even fix the damage these things caused? Were people eaten? Where are the police? She needs to be arrested. And then to top it all off, we get a Jurassic Park reference as the film producer guy appears, flying in strapped to a helicopter, begging to buy them and put them on an island and make millions. Dank. The heroes then split off and we get a glimpse of Rena Rouge's new suit. And I am not all about it. Initially it looked cool, but the colour scheme just isn't for me. In some random alleyway, Nino takes off his Miraculous and gives it back to Ladybug, but she notices he still looks upset. She asks him what's wrong, and he replies that he's confused as to why Alia hasn't been given a Miraculous recently. Awkward. And then she replies that it's because they only needed him and that he did a great job, before zipping away leaving him looking kinda sad. Good on him though, good boyfriend. Wholesome Nino. Ladybug then meets up with Rena Rouge in the sewer, of all places, to debrief and detransform. I mean, they could literally go anywhere. Why would you choose a filthy cesspit like a sewer? And what if somebody you know sees you exit the sewer whilst you're in your civilian clothes? How do you explain why you were in the sewer without looking like a freaky mole man? Oh yeah, I was just chillin' down there. Nah, mate. Nah. Anyway, Marinette asks Alia whether she spotted Shadow Moth or a spy, and she tells her no before they both detransform. Marinette then tells Alia that she needs to ask her something, and for some reason, Alia thinks it's about her new costume, which apparently has adapted to a new role. But if that was the case, why not have a suit that makes you invisible? And don't tell me that it couldn't happen. She has a magic necklace that gives her superpowers and dresses her up like a fox. I think it could handle making a stealth suit. How would a blue and white suit help her blend in all that well? She's still pretty conspicuous. Marinette then tells her that it's not about that and asks whether she's told Nino that she isn't the user of the Fox Miraculous anymore, to which she receives a negative response. Marinette then scolds Alia, telling her that they need to make sure that there's no risk of anybody finding out that she's still helping Ladybug, including Nino. And true that, Alia, remember that time Shadow Moth tried to murder your entire family? Maybe take a hint and realize it's better to tell a little lie to prevent a deranged supervillain kicking in your apartment door again. Just a thought. Back in Marinette's room, Alia's still having trouble with the whole telling lies thing. And normally, I'd be in two minds about this. But it really is an ultimatum here. Boyfriend's trust or dead family. The choice really shouldn't be that hard. We know that Nino struggles to keep secrets, even before this episode. Remember when Alia told him about how Marinette had a crush on Adrian and he could barely keep it together ever since? Imagine if this was a life-threatening situation. Come on now. Drama for the sake of drama. And then Marinette's dad bursts in and tries to convince them to come play video games and Marinette slams the trapdoor in his head. Poor dad. That would hurt. She then tells Alia that they all have to make sacrifices to protect their secret identities and guilts Alia into going to talk to Nino. And whilst Marinette is logically in the right, I did find it kind of funny that she thinks keeping a secret from your parents is the same thing as keeping a secret from your boyfriend. It shows that she's still pretty naive on the whole relationship thing. The scene then transitions to Alia's room as she's chilling with Nino. He asks if she wants to play Super Pinguino, but she replies that they need to talk, and then she becomes needlessly vague, telling him it's hard to talk about and everything between them might change. So of course, of course Nino thinks he's getting dumped. Seriously, she needs to work on her lead-ins because that sounds like the beginning of every breakup speech ever. Alia then tells him that her time as Rena Rouge is over in order to protect her and her family and that Ladybug's never going to give her a miraculous again. He then hugs her and tells her not to worry and that she can always tell him anything. <sighs> Awkward. In class the next day, Marinette tells Alia that she did the right thing and that they need to protect their secret identities at all costs. And here's a good way to do that. Maybe don't openly talk about the fact that you are famous vigilantes in the middle of class. 
Seriously, even if you whisper, who's to say somebody doesn't hear you? Marinette needs to work on her espionage. And then outside, they do the exact same thing. Marinette asks Alia whether she's ready for their night walks, which is vague enough not to be weird. But then Alia openly starts talking about ladybugs and kitties, little foxes, and super mean moths. Considering these hugely famous superheroes wear animal-themed costumes, literally anybody nearby could hear them and say, hmm, that's a bit suspicious. Especially when these heroes are also clearly teenagers. And then Alia openly shows Marinette selfies of her in her hero costume. Come on, work with me here. She even thinks that posting the selfie on the lady blog is a good idea. Shadow Moth knows she was the fox wielder. If he sees this pic on Alia's own blog, he's going to come running back thinking he got tricked. Because he did. Also, what happened to Alia's characterization in this episode? In the last episode, she was a smart tactician and pretty much single-handedly planned the entire takedown of Senti Bubbler and Shadow Moth. How is she so careless now? Feels like it's going to her head a little bit. At least at this point though, Marinette does crinkle that brain of hers and puts her foot down, much to Alia's despair, who then decides to edit together a cat noir compilation for the blog instead. We then briefly rewind to get Nino's perspective, who notices that Alia seems upset, and being a good boyfriend, decides to try and cheer her up. What a chad! And invites her to the movies. And then they go and see what looks like the sequel to the other Ladybug and Cat Noir movie from Anna Maestro. And I have to ask, how did they make the sequel so fast? The first movie came out during season 3. I can't imagine season 4 is that far into the future. I'm no expert, but I do know that animated feature films meant for cinema usually don't get cranked out at such a rapid pace. Now, I have no idea about the timeline of the events of the show in terms of years, because it's barely ever referenced. So, I checked the wiki, and of course, it has zero sources and kind of just lists things. But here we go. The wiki reckons that Anna Maestro is set in spring 2016, and that Rocketeer is set autumn 2016. So am I meant to believe that they made a sequel so quickly, and managed to have it released in cinemas, or at least have a trailer in the cinema? Although the class did make that short film with Zoe and Malen in like a day, so who knows? Who knows with this world? Regardless, it still made me laugh, although Nino needs to work on his cinema etiquette, yelling at the screen asking where Carapace is, pulling a ladybug much, and then freaking out when the filmmakers take creative liberties such as Cat Noir and Rena Rouge falling in love. And also, I need this film in my life. I need it badly. I don't care that they're spoofing bad fanfiction. I don't care that the animation style's completely different. I need this film injected into my soul. Can they not make a 40 minute special or something with this animation style, complete with dramatic plots, cheesy acting, and over the top musical score? Yes, please! And side note though, I do actually feel for Nino here because now there's gonna be an endless horde of news articles, explicit artwork, and fan fictions for him to cry about. These movie makers really did him dirty. After they get out of the movie, Alia's acting a bit distant with poor Nino, before they hear the jingle of Andre's ice cream cart. And so, they head off to get some ice cream. Only for Ladybug to appear where only Alia can see her beckoning her to come help her, leaving Alia to ditch Nino just as they're about to buy some food. Seriously, Marinette? Maybe a text message would be a good idea? What if Nino noticed you? Or literally, anybody else noticed you? But then of course, Nino does notice Cat Noir zip past, complete with majestic slow-mo, and then a little girl dressed as Ladybug tells her friends dressed as Cat Noir and Rena Rouge that Cat Noir only loves Ladybug. The Cat Noir kid replies saying that the ladies love Cat Noir and grabs both their hands before running off, playing out Nino's fear that Alia's gonna get drawn into a Cat Noir polyamory situation. Dude, he's just not having a good day today. And then he watches Alia's latest blog post talking about how Cat Noir is an amazing, funny, and cute superhero. And then he calls Adrian ranting about how Alia's in love with Cat Noir. And we also get some lovely Adrian sass, telling him she's just as likely to be in love with Jagged Stone's crocodile and that there's no proof, which causes Nino to declare he's gonna find that proof. And now it's starting to stray into overprotective and possessive boyfriend territory there, champ. Cool those jets. After the call ends, Adrian declares that there's no proof of any of this, only for Plague to decide that she probably did fall in love with him because of Plague's natural charisma rubbing off on him. And instead of laughing at stupid Plague and his ridiculous claims, Adrian immediately believes him and starts to worry that he flirted too hard and made her fall for him. And whilst it sounds ridiculous at first, he actually might have a point. Adrian's not stupid, he knows that Kagami, Lila, and Chloe all liked him, as well as the screaming hordes of fangirls that like him for his modelling. Plus, despite his denial, 
there can be no way that he doesn't realize Marinette at least has a tiny crush on him, even if he's just being nice about it. I could understand why he would so readily believe that Ali would fall for him too. Even if it is hilariously arrogant, he knows he's a stud. And so because of this, he has to make sure and transforms to go find Alia. And then we have one of the funniest sequences of the entire episode, perhaps of the season. Nino goes full film noir, dressing up as Sherlock Holmes, standing behind a fountain to simulate standing in the rain and using a bubble blower as a fake cigar. And then this is completed by a black and white screen, noir music, and of course, over the top dramatic narration. And I really like that the episodes have been thinking outside the box recently. Optigami a while ago was very much a horror movie. And now they're throwing in some film noir references of all things into the mix. They're taking risks and they're working hard to improve the show. And I think it's pretty exciting regardless of what you think of the actual storyline. In Alia's room, we see her working at a computer when she hears a knock at the window. And surprise, surprise, it's Cat Noir. He mentions that he saw she posted a new video about him and that she's followed him and Ladybug from the beginning. And that he thinks she may have feelings for him. And then she laughs at him and maybe laughs a little too hard. Ouch. She then tells him that she has a boyfriend that she loves and they hug it out. She then tickles him under the chin, telling him that Nino's too irresistible and that she couldn't love somebody with a secret identity she didn't know. And that should be all well and good, but it turns out her boyfriend is a massive stalker and filmed the whole thing, with particular emphasis on seeing them make love heart symbols with their hands and then hug. By the way, what was he going to do if Cat Noir never turned up? Would he have lurked outside her house all night? I mean, you kind of feel bad, Noel, because he cried, but come on, dude, don't be a lurker. I'm really worried about what they're teaching the boys at their school. Remember when Ivan said he'd rip off the girl's bathroom door when Rose was in there? Or when Max timed how long she took to use the bathroom? Like I said, they need some kind of workshop or something on how not to be a creep. The next day at school, Adrian approaches Nino telling him he has something to tell him. But what was he going to say? That he has proof about Alia not liking Cat Noir? What proof? He can't say that he went himself and found out because that would make it obvious who he is. What could he possibly say to make Nino feel better? Ultimately, it doesn't matter what he was going to say though because Nino then drags him into the murder basement where he set up a mock detective's office complete with typewriter. And I love it. But why did he set this up? How did he set this up? Why does he still have his fake moustache on? And Adrian seems to agree with me. But Nino cuts him off and he shows him proof of Alia and Cat Noir's love affair, to which Adrian of course denies it all and tells him she's just a fan and they barely know each other. And whilst for a moment it looks like he might get through to Nino, the moment passes and Nino tells him that they know each other better than you'd think and that Alia's Rena Rouge and Nino's Carapace. And so much for keeping it a secret, mate. This is pure smooth brainery. And also I think it's a very clear plot device to establish that Marinette was right to tell Alia to keep her identity as Rena Rouge a secret. Nino can't be trusted. Adrian then kind of gets mad that they know each other's secret identities and tells him that Ladybug would never have allowed it, to which Nino replies that she gave them the Miraculouses at the same time. <sighs> Awkward. Although, I do think it's besides the point, and I think Adrian's getting a little sidetracked in his own issues now. Getting back on topic, Adrian then tells him that even if that was the case, it doesn't mean Alia and Cat Noir are a thing, and that Nino's being ridiculous. Nino then proceeds to rip Cat Noir a new one, telling Adrian that Cat Noir is essentially a simp, throwing himself at Ladybug's feet with roses and love confessions, and that Ladybug always rejects him because he's annoying. He then tells him that he flirts with Rena Rouge and upstages Carapace, and now he's stolen away Alia. And then he cries. Oh, kind of sad. But then he wishes death on Cat Noir, and suddenly, I don't feel as bad. Funny that. And then finally... Finally, we get to see old mate Gabe return as he akumatizes Nino into Rocketeer. And then Nino goes to tell Shadow Moth that the only thing that will be left of Ladybug and Cat Noir are the Miraculouses. Um, okay. Full on murder. Nice. It's going to be pretty awkward for Gabe if he found out who Cat Noir actually was in the moment of his death. Although I do like the dark turn the show has been taking recently though whilst also still keeping all that classic cheesiness. It's definitely making this season stand out from the rest in my opinion. Adrian then tries to talk him down and gets swatted like a fly, before Plague tells Adrian to just leave it be and let him trash Paris so that he doesn't get killed. And I'm glad Plague cares about Adrian, but come on man, coward much? And then Adrian powers up with his rare sad face transformation, although ridiculously he still does all the silly poses. I guess he can't resist it. Meanwhile in class, Marinette and Alia discuss how Cat Noir thought that Alia was into her, with Alia laughing, and Marinette face palming before they hear the sounds of explosions outside, revealing Rocketeer fighting Cat Noir and destroying the street at the same time. 
Whilst the rest of the class are distracted looking out the window at the fight, the girls sneak off to be able to transform. But like, hey class, don't stand near the windows when there's a villain that shoots exploding tears. Do you wish for death? In the murder basement, the girls prepare to transform only to find Nino's detective setup and Nino's phone paused on her hug with Cat Noir. Hilariously, Marinette then gets suspicious of Alia a little bit, but not in an angry way. More like a, really? Of all the people you cheat with, you choose him? You can do better, kind of way. Of course, Alia tells her it's all a misunderstanding, and that if Nino had heard the conversation, he would have never believed it. And then the two transform, and Ladybug immediately uses her lucky charm, which reveals itself to be a projector. And the two decide to use Rena's mirage to reveal to Nino what was actually said on the balcony. In the street, Rocketeer keeps trying to murder Cat Noir, who's just trying to explain he did nothing wrong. To try and prove it, he tosses away his staff, and Nino, in response, blows him up and smashes him into a van. As he goes to full-on execute him, Ladybug pulls his arm with a yo-yo, accidentally blowing up part of a building. <sighs> Yikes. Hope nobody was in there. Ladybug then reveals that she has a super modern projector that also plays sound. Not suspicious at all, Nino. And that he needs to watch it now. And then it's revealed that it was all a misunderstanding, and Alia D transforms and runs off to find Nino. And then Nino uses the power of love, always so strong, to dekumatize himself. Hooray! Happy ending! And of course, Ladybug catches the Akuma and fixes everything. Afterwards, Ladybug gives Nino a charm and he apologizes to Cat Noir who says it's all good and that everybody has doubts before leaving with a sad face. Foreshadowing. This season just keeps piling on the heartbreak for him and finding out that Ladybug made an exception to the identity rule has definitely got to sting. It definitely feels like our feline friend is getting akumatized again, isn't he? I made a video about the possibility of Cat Blanc 2 in season 4, so check that out if you haven't seen it. At the very least though, he and Ladybug are not going to be on good terms at some point. And this is further compounded by him complaining about it to Plague, who just tells him, using a glorious cheese analogy, that Ladybug is the Guardian, and the Guardian's the boss. Obviously, he's not going to get much sympathy from Plague. We then finish up the episode with Alia revealing that she actually is still Rena Rouge, she just has to operate in secret, with Nino just being, oh, okay, that's fine. So in the end, this whole episode was just a big misunderstanding. And that brings us to the end of the episode, and I thought it was decent, but the conclusion happened super fast, so if you like action, this would have been a super letdown for sure. That being said, those are just my thoughts, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? Like it? Hate it? Make sure to leave a comment, and let me know.